everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. We're in the career mode in the version 1.0.5. My name is Redneck Einstein and here you are going to see a two times speeded up mission to land on Mars. Manned mission where we land on Mars with Jebediah, the legendary Jebediah in the game since the very beginning. Now you can see the ablator I'm carrying on my rocket is 80. Now I find that's quite a nice balance between the amount of ablator you need to, on re-entry to Kerbin. There is quite a lot of heating up that goes on as you re-enter the atmosphere of Kerbin. But first of all, we must deal with getting to the moon. So you can see I've constructed this behemoth of a rocket. It's huge. It's, well, especially for this early stage of the um, career mode. So I just jettisoned my huge solid fuel tanks. And now we are off into trying to create some sort of orbit around Kerbin. Now, the, the best way that I've found to do this is to burn up as high as I can, like so. Then tilt my rocket to the right and into the orange section here. And as long as we're gaining speed, then we're decreasing our apo apoapsis, which is the peak of our trajectory, but not enough to take us below the threshold of 75,000 meters. So this will enable us to create a nice sort of, sort of roughly circular orbit around the planet. And from there, it makes um, traversing or changing our course towards the moon a lot easier. Now, I'm having to do another burn right here. I've got to try and find out a maneuver that will take me in direct contact with the moon. So I expand the green, um, the green little markers there. Now, thankfully, the moon is in the same sort of planar. I think the word is planar orbit. Correct me if I'm wrong. But essentially, I don't need to change the, my degree of uh, orbit around Kerbin in, in order to create a stable approach towards the moon. So you can see, here we go. We're on our big, massive, central, dildo-shaped rocket now. And we're just trying to get an encounter with the moon. Now, the moon's gravity is quite high when you compare it to Minmus. It's not as high as Kerbin, but it is higher than Minmus. And so that sucks us in relatively far away so you can see we escape now from our Kerbin orbit and we're heading towards the moon now I wanted to make sure that I landed on the light side of the moon in order to keep my um, solar panels working because our, our, on our rocket we've got the science junior we've got parachutes we've got um, we've got temperature gauges we've got a barometer uh, like I said the, the science junior and I think I had an antenna on here. Now, I am commentating after the fact because these missions do take a long time. I just wanted to save you some time. But if, you, if you're stuck on any part and you want me to go through what you need to do, don't hesitate to get in touch. I'm always willing to lend a hand. I am pretty good at the game. I've managed to go to all the planets and moons on previous playthroughs. Uh, but now it's on 1.0.5. I thought, why not play the whole career? Because there's new parts and everything. So I'm really excited to play around with those but in order to unlock the new parts you need loads of science points now i hoped on this mission that i would be able to meet one of these contracts where they want me to do sort of atmospheric analysis and temperature analysis of the moon in certain aspects but i think we're going to have to go back another time and do those because for this i didn't have the fuel i would need in order to get to the moon do those readings and then come back to kerbin so you can see we're just just above the the sort of uh, you know the planet here or the moon, and we're roughly fifty nine thousand meters up. Now what we had to do here is burn retrograde, which basically means burn in the opposite direction to which we're flying, in order to kill the majority, if not all, of our <clears throat> of our speed. Basically, <clears throat> excuse me. So once we've done that, that will mean we start getting sucked down to the Earth. So I thought, well, instead of jettison, jettisoning this uh, huge stage of my rocket, I thought, why not keep it, use the fuel we've got here, <clears throat> excuse me, and then uh, jettison it and then use the final stage of our rocket. Now, the reason I wanted to do that was because in a few trial runs, I got rid of that large stage too early and I didn't have the fuel necessary to slow down my descent towards the moon and then escape again. You do need quite a big change in delta V to escape the moon. I would say around a thousand meters per second. So you do need quite a lot. So anyway, 
then we start descending and you want to really control your descent here. You, you want to be burning retrograde as you can see with the green circle on the nav ball down there with the cross through it. The green circle with the cross through it. So you need to slow down your descent. Now I try to usually land at between 0 and 6 meters per second. I find that's quite a nice speed to approach the planet at. Obviously I think on Minmus you can even land a bit faster but for the moon I tried to you don't want to be burning too much fuel here, so if you gradually use the control on your rocket, uh, control on the thruster to land at a nice speed, and so we've done that. Then we land, and we're like, yeah, let's get loads of science. So 32 science from the temperature gauge is quite significant. Then I observe the mystery goo, that's another 40 science. Uh, do the barometer test, that's 48 science, which is quite huge. And then I want to do a crew report. You want to do as much as you can once you land on these planets. It's a hard job actually landing on them, especially when you get onto the further planets like um, Duna and everything. So I did loads and loads of science here. That's 100 science just for carrying the Science Junior here, as long as you can recover it. So I do an EVA report with old Jebediah. Now you can see my rocket's got two antenna on it to transmit stuff. Bit of a failure on my part. But the weight, the additional weight wasn't too bad. Just as well I'm not in charge of uh, NASA, eh? I'd be causing them budget over, over spending all the time. Anyway, we plant our flag and that gets us one of our contracts completed. So we plant that. We've got all our science data. So then we need to get back in our rocket and try and leave this beast. Now you can see it is a little bit tricky to get off. You just need to get used to the gravity pulling on you. So I transmit some data back but I need to um, just fast forward time in order to get enough electricity to do that. Didn't want to use all my electricity uh, because then you wouldn't be able to start the thrusters to leave which quite frankly would be ludicrous. Come all this way and then get stranded on the planet. Um, so then we're off now. Remember to tuck your legs in as you take off otherwise it just creates additional drag and reduces the amount of delta V you have available. Now, this is my trajectory off the moon, so I'm just burning at full pelt here, trying to escape the gravitational pull. And you can see I'm already at 500 meters per second, and I still haven't managed to escape its gravity. So there is quite a huge amount of uh, delta V you still need remaining. And at 730-ish, I've managed to escape the, gra the, the pull of the moon, and I still have 753 delta V remaining in order to create my approach to Kerbin, which is, well, that's exactly what we need to do, because if we don't, all that science we've gathered is for naught. So we grab all of that, we move forward with our time. Now this is speeded up, remember, times two, and then you speed it up in the game, so you can imagine how long some of these missions take. Um, then I just do my burn, and as long as we approach with sort of a, a nice low, you don't want to be approaching into Kerbin at too steep of an angle, so you want a shallow angle approach, um, which I've performed my maneuver to do so. And then obviously you can see us, we're flying above Kerbin. There is hope, yet yeah, we can we can recover. I've turned my rocket here retrograde, because I was thinking, shall I do a burn in order to slow down even more? And then I thought, no, nah, just go for it. Approach head first with my heat shield trying to protect my rocket but it's not fail safe i'm not quite sure how to make a fail safe rocket that doesn't have any explosions as you can see there i think what that was was the legs blowing off of my rocket now thankfully we didn't lose too much else um all seems to be quite good the barometer is still there the temperature gauge the science junior a number of explosions. I can't imagine what Jebediah is thinking. He must be pooping in his pants. Um, do let me know, by the way, if you do want to see these videos speeded up or if you want me to record them in real time. I'm more than willing to do either. I uh, just want to cater to you guys, really. So anyway, back to what we're doing. So we're, we're gradually decreasing our speed as we use this shallow angle uh, entry into Kerbin to maximize the amount of drag and resistance on our rocket so it slows us down nice nicely now we're through that heating phase and we're just now into the uh, sort of wind and atmospheric conditions that we would experience walking around every day um, but I've got these weird blue and red lines I don't know what caused those if anyone knows do let me know but we just we decreased our speed enough 
using the atmosphere to deploy our parachutes and we are now slowed down at a speed that I'm comfortable landing back on Kerbin with. You can see we're going around sort of four, four to six meters per second. 4.5 now it's stabilized and you can fiddle about with the engine you can speed up time like I've done so in engine and in the recording um, so yeah we just descend gradually take a little check around the cockpit and now we've landed without blowing up any more of our rocket which was quite frankly a bit of a disaster on my oversight uh, on my my part but we've now got 293 science and 492,069 sort of Kerbal credits so we can go and unlock some stuff so what, what, what do we unlock that's the thing I wasn't quite sure what I should unlock um, so just taking a little look around see what parts will enable me to further my Kerbal career and uh, I, I opt for that one because it's got giant fuel tanks which will help me in further missions now that's about it you can see you can join me on the next episode and we'll go to Minmus thanks ever so much for watching guys bye bye